Hi everyone and welcome to one of the, let's say more fun, I don't know, it's not proper English to say that, but one of the funner, which isn't proper English to say that either, uh, videos to watch in the course because we're going to be chatting about Dreamweaver and how we can utilize this IDE to make image maps and spry objects. Most importantly, I think you're probably watching this video because you're very interested in the spry objects, but I'm also going to touch on image maps and how we'll, we will use them in the course. Um, again, like always, uh, I love that Dreamweaver does these things for us, and I'm going to talk to you about practically how you might be wanting to use them here within the course. Um, so this is just an example of the code used to make an image map. So let's just take a moment and just chat a little bit about image maps and how we'll be using them here in this course. Um, well, how we'll be using them in this course, in my mind, hopefully sparingly, and we'll talk about that more in just a moment. You know, I know we all learn how to do them in Co-op 2000, at least if I know that you did if you took Co-op 2000 with me, but now that we're continuing our learning with XHTML and CSS in this course, you must, let's say, can we say, must learn their place, and ideally how that they should be used, um, which honestly is, is sparingly, especially not for your primary navigation. I repeat, we do not use image maps for your primary navigation. If I've seen anybody doing that in any of the drafts that they've been sending me, I've told them not to. So I repeat, do not be using image maps for your primary navigation. Uh, but more on that in just a bit, um, if I didn't hit that at home enough for, for us. Um, but, you know, if you took 2000 with me, you know, we learned how to make image maps and do that um, easily within imagemaps.com. And guess what? Dreamweaver has a very similar functionality. And when it's in my mind, it's even easier to do that within Dreamweaver, um, which is a great, you know, addition to our IDE. Um, again, if you took 2000 with me, you know, you may remember this painting and how we used it to create an image map. So let's just take a second and we're just going to Google people of influence painting and check out um, how this image map is used on that site. And we can chat about how perhaps we can use it. Okay, so I have Googled the people of influence painting, um, as you can see right up here in my browser, and then most likely the first link that you're probably going to be coming to is this cliptank.com. Sorry about these advertisements up here at the top, but look down here. This is our image map that I was talking about. Notice uh, we can click on, like, let's say we want to click on this link for Bruce Lee, and then this page is actually well designed because it is, since it's an external site link, it is opening up in a new window, so I'm glad that they did that functionality. But it just jumps us over to the Wikipedia page. Notice here there's also these pop-ups, and I'm going to show you how we can do that in Dreamweaver as well. That's not something that you learned from me in 2000. But anyway, so this is just an example of an image map. This is an image, in my opinion, this is a good example of an image map being used because it's not used for primary navigation. This is just a fun way for the users to have some sort of interactive content within a site. And in my opinion, that's a great reason to, to use an image map. Um, so let's now chat a little bit more about image maps. So before we get into using Dreamweaver to create an image map, I just would like to answer these three questions. You know, what is an image map? What are the disadvantages of using image maps? And then also the differences between uh, server versus client-side image maps. Within Dreamweaver, we can create rectangular, polygon, and circular image maps right there within our IDE. Our text discusses this process for creating these different kinds of image maps. Um, for example, you know, Dreamweaver will determine for you the radius and the x-axis for the edge of the circle. Um, for a polygon, Dreamweaver will actually find for you all of the coordinates for all of the edges that you create on the image map. And then, even for the basic rectangle, it will find for you the top left coordinate and the bottom right coordinate of that rectangle. And all of these coordinates are then going to be coded for you in relation to that reference point which is the top left corner of the image, which is 0, 0. If you took, you know, 2000 with me, you may remember, you know, hard coding those. Um, so Dreamweaver is going to make our lives so much easier um, for doing that right here. We even used imagemap.com. Even that was still a little bit, a little, there was still difficulty doing that. Um, Dreamweaver is going to do it all for us. So now let's talk about some disadvantages of using image maps. You know, now that... Um, your text does talk some about the disadvantages of them, and I've already briefly mentioned some of them here. You know, think about what if a user's blocking images. You know, always remember that the user can choose. 
you know, would you ever want to leave a very key piece of your site open for the possibility of the design or the functionality that could fail because that user being able to choose? The answer would be no. You know, this could be the case for an image map. As I was just discussing earlier, you know, I see students create their entire web page navigation within an image map. And if I've seen any of you doing that so far, I've told you not to. You know, this is not a good idea because if the user is blocking images, then how would the user be able to navigate through the site? And we wouldn't want to leave that, that, that up to chance. Um, I even had a student once come to the final present night of presenting. This is when I'm teaching the course face to face. Come to the final presentation night, and he had image mapped, use an image map for all of its primary navigation. <laughs> the image map didn't work on the browser that was in the computer lab. So we couldn't navigate a site. And remember, our design should also always be responsive. What I mean by that, you've heard me mention it before, but responsive just means that we want to make sure that our sites, you know, as best as we can right now with what we've learned so far with XHTML and CSS, make sure that our sites will work on different devices, different user agents, you know, and sometimes image map functionality could be difficult on these different types of devices. So this is why we should generally keep a text version of our leaks locations somewhere else on the web page to make sure that the user can still you know get to that information so if you like that people of influence painting maybe at the you'd scroll to the bottom of it and then you would have links to all of the the different people represented in the painting so they could still get to those areas of wikipedia if that was uh, that was a, the, one of the main points of the site and then finally the differences between server and client side image maps um, you know similar to what we did in 2000 the same case is today you know we and this is largely dependent on our access to the Webster server, you know, because we don't really, we can't really do a lot with server scripts now. If you do take other classes within the web development certificate, you do get more in doing more with server uh, type scripting. But and thus the case for this class, we're just going to be having the client do everything, having the client's browser do everything right there in the browser. So, so the browsers, their browsers, going to be doing all of the work. So. Whenever you're making your image map within, within, within Drew, we just make sure you're using client side image maps. So now let's take a moment and check out actually doing this within Drew Mover. And we'll see how easy it is. So, what I have here is I have the People of Influence image um, attached. It's now I have coded a web page that's basically you know, giving us a window to where that image is. Remember, because you know, when we do HTML pages, we don't actually put the image on the page. You know, we're just coding a window to where the, the location of the image is. And I have this, basically I just have this page stored on my desktop, and I have the HTML page that I'm working on stored on my desktop. So all we're doing is just having just a, a link at the root of my desktop, which is acting like a folder, to where this image is. Now the cool thing, I don't know if let me click outside the image to kind of demo this for you. Well, hang on. Okay, the properties inspector down here at the bottom. You know, you've been learning a lot about the Drew Mover interface from watching the Linda videos, but the properties inspector down here at the bottom is contextual. So it's based on, it gives you properties based on the types of things that you're clicking on. So when you're just working with just such a web page, you'll, you'll see, you know, properties for text and creating links but as soon as you click on a link the properties inspector changes because it's contextual to give you properties for this specific image so it's going to give you options for you know if you want to have a border on the image the alignment of the image and some of this stuff when you work on it it's then going to change it based on CSS and, and different things what we're going to be doing is we're going to be using this map information down here below we could actually give our map a specific name. I'm not even going to do that. I'm just going to let Drew Mover give it a name, which the default name is map. And then we can create either a rectangular, circular, or polygon image map. So what you do, let's say I wanted to come over here to Bruce Lee. So I'm going to scroll over. And I'm going to create just a circular image map for Bruce Lee's face. You're then prompted to enter in alternate text so that you are compliant for all different users and different devices. Although I don't know how someone with a seeing impairment, how, how well they're going to function with it, be able to use this image map. So keep that in mind. And then so I'm going to write in the alternate text as Bruce Lee. And then I could create, give the link for 
um, for the image map, which I can't remember. Hang on. Uh, let's say it was uh, www.brucelee.com. I actually don't even know if that's correct, but and then the target make sure that you would set that to blank so that it would open up in a new in a new window. So I'm going to go ahead and hit save and I'm going to preview this in Firefox. So now when I hover over Bruce Lee it gives me the option to go to brucelee.com. Brucelee.com isn't really an actual web page so that's why it's giving me that. But basically you see the functionality of it. You hover over it and uh, you'll see it, it could take me to brucelee.com in a new window. Let's take a look at the code that it just coded for us. So basically it added, you know, the it created the element, the map element. Within it it had the the name property, which is, you know, that it's gonna give us the value of map, and then it's gonna it actually creates an ID for us and it gives the the value of map for that as well. Now you can use you could change the name right now if you need to. And then it's gonna give us the area element within the map area element. Proper the shape property of the value of a circle, which tells us that it's looking for three coordinates. And then it gives us the HTML reference for the website that doesn't work, and then this tells us that it opens up a new window. And then this right here is going to give us the alternate text for that image hotspot. So that is how quick, well, I mean, I can show you how to do some other ones. I mean, you could literally just click rectangle, you can create more hotspots, hit OK, put in some alternate text, you can create more hotspots. You can do all this right here with the div. Remember, take a check out the code, and it's coded all three of those for me now. And you can always go back to them. Just touch the image map, and then it brings up the place where you can then insert, you know, an actual alternate text, and then you can insert what you need to do for the link and for the how it will open. Okay. So that's image maps. Let's talk a little bit about spry objects and how we'll be using those within the course as well and then we're going to come back to this image at the very end and I'm going to show you how to give it the functionality that we saw on that people of influence website so whether you know it or not the moment you've been waiting for has arrived uh, if you haven't already been playing with these now is your time to do it uh, the dream of spry ab uh, objects is just an, ama an amazing way to incorporate um, some stuff that normally you would have to code in, in JavaScript or do some very high level stuff with CSS. Dreamer has, has a couple of these things, these objects built for you and they can just basically just drop them into a page and then edit the functionality and then there's just you know so many different things that you can do with them. They all have their own specific use but there's so many different things that you can do with these things. So this is where for example if you've ever wanted to have a horizontal drop down menu there's a spray object for that. You know, if you've thought about having a vertical, you know, pop out menu, there's a spray object for that. <laughs> uh, I mean, you can use these for the navigation of your entire site. So there's no need to go and Google, you know, drop down menu, JavaScript, and then throw in a bunch of JavaScript and then fiddle around trying to figure out how to, how to edit it. Dreammover, the IDE is going to be able to do all of this for you. Um, some of these are, are great for. Um, navigation of an entire site. Some of them are just used to present content on a page. There's different things to do. Like for example, the tab module. A Dreamer can create a tab module for you so that you can have lots of content on one page, but it's organized within these different tabs. We also have the accordion widget, the collapsible panel, and then the tooltips, which is what is going to give us the functionality um, similar to the people of image, people of influence image that we saw earlier on the website, where you hovered over. Um, a piece of the image that showed you the name of the, the person of influence and um, I'm not going to go into how to customize the CSS to make it like the people of influence how they did it but I'm going to show you how Dreamweaver the default way to have Dreamweaver do it so anyways let's just go ahead and 
take a look at these uh, the page that I have within the course that talks about some of these. So here's the page that I have set up for you within the course. You could just kind of preview what some of these objects look like. You know, you could also just try them out yourself with the Dream Mover, and I'm going to show you just a second how to set that up. But basically, there's these objects that I was just talking to you about, and then here is some specific tutorials that come from uh, Adobe themselves on the use uh, and how to set up and customize these different objects, depending on how you have access to your uh, Dreamweaver CS4, 5, or 6, or, or, or whatever you're using. Um, you may or may not have access to these documents depending on if it's registered or not. But I wanted to make sure that everybody in the class can basically have everything that they need. So I went ahead and provided you those links here directly to the course so you can get the additional information that other people with the registered versions of the product would be able to get. Anyways, let's go ahead and take a look at, for example, the horizontal drop-down menu. So this is just a simple menu that I made. Now this could be used for your entire navigation of your whole site. I chose, now these are not links, so you click on Joker or the Riddler, it doesn't take you anywhere. Um, but these could be coded to link to different areas of your site. So you could code your page to have this at the top of every single one of your pages. And then all of these links, you would just basically just make the, the object once, and then you just copy that code and place it on all of your pages, basically. But, so this isn't really a functional image. Uh, this isn't really a functional drop-down menu right now, because these are not linked, but I just wanted to show you just the basically the functionality design of it and then within those uh, tutorials that I told you about which is a link right here you know it'll go into depth of how to change the colors of these things but keep in mind Drew does a good job of making all of the CSS like it's whenever you go to create this it's gonna automatically create a CSS file and a JavaScript file for you that you can go in and it's gonna talk to you about specifically where the colors are where the the the, the other design aspects of the Spry object are, and it's going to talk to you about how you could change those. So again, you know, students could use this, uh, using this for their horizontal drop-down menu to control their entire site navigation. And this is probably the most popular Spry object that I have seen used in this class. You know, of course, we also have uh, a vertical menu. So I just took the same code, the, the same content from the previous. Now these links don't work again, but this is a vertical menu. And notice that you could even have, you know, extra levels of extra, I mean, you can have, you, you can even keep this going even further out. But there's multiple um, levels of, for the navigation that you could create. We also have a tab module. Now, again, this is content, if you needed to present content, lots of content on one page, perhaps organized by these different tabs. And I talk about that up here. I just put in filler text. You might find this filler text interesting. You can go to Fillerama, which is a fun place to get your filler text because then you can choose filler text from all these different places and it basically generates text for you that you could use to fill your uh, your content out. <coughs> Excuse me. So again, this is a tab module, and uh, currently this is then I just set all these up with the default. So these are all just how they're default set up with the Dreamweaver. They come and you can use, you can go to the CSS and change the colors of these things and stuff like that. Let's take a look at the accordion. So, this is a little neat, a little different perhaps. This might or may not be something that you're interested in using for your site. And again, this is not for your entire site navigation, but maybe there would be a need to, to have something like this in your site. Collapsible panels, panel. Maybe there'd be a need for something like that. And then of course, the tooltips. So the tooltip will get it where you hover over a specific a sp something specific. And again, I set these tooltips up at the on all of these H2s here, and then you see the content that pops up over to the right. Now that's all customizable. And with the Dreamweaver, the color of this, how it pops out. Does it pop out on hover? Does it pop out on the click? So keep that in mind. You can find information about that here within this tutorial. So let's take a look at some of this in Dreamweaver. Here's the page that we were working with previously, so I could just go from here, File, New. I'm going to just create a very simple page. Hit Create, so this is just a blank page, and then you can come up here to your Quick Launch area, and I'm just going to choose Spry. 
and I can choose these different types of menus and as soon as you create something it's going to say please save the document before you can insert widgets and you hit OK. I'm just going to go ahead and save this here in my web desktop and I'm just going to say test. But perhaps you have template pages that I mean the CSS layout pages that you've made previously you know you can go ahead and open up one of those remove your old navigation and you can just go ahead and start working within those so I clicked on the menu bar so I can choose either the horizontal or the vertical I'm just going to go ahead and click the horizontal now as soon as like let's say you're working on other code within here doing some other things yada 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 now don't forget the properties inspector is contextual so you click on this spree menu bar uh, object here and then the properties inspector down here is contextual so it can then give you different properties you can change you can change the name of your menu bar obviously menu bar one is not very effective for someone who's reviewing your code and updating it these things like item one item 1.1 you know you're gonna obviously change you would change this to you click on it then you might change this to your uh, home page maybe and then if you down here below you could change this to something else I don't know um, if you ever need to move these things around like for example or if, let's say you didn't need all of these different items in here you can always hit the minus button so now my home page doesn't have it's not going to have anything drop down below it but let's say this next one click on item 2 I'm going to change this to uh, about and then let's say I need to have different things here within the about so untitled item I can switch this to uh, history I could ch add another one for uh, other, other works and then maybe underneath history I need to have a third level of navigation so I could click history you could say like early years maybe different things you could do maybe your author has you know work they did early in their career and maybe work that they did post you also have the opportunity if you already know those links you can go ahead and link them right here within here then you could even bring out your file structure and you can point to these different areas to link to those different things so let's take a look at the code so here within the code I mean it's basically just creating a, a list for you that's then being controlled by this class which is in your CSS um, and notice here it's also creating for you the spree menu bar JavaScript you're gonna find that folder in your file structure and then within that folder you're also gonna find your menu bar horizontal CSS you can then go into that folder and you could drag all of those files and then put them all in your INC folder perhaps and then it's going to ask you to update your links and of course you'd say yes let me go into live view so you can just see all that's right there within Dreamweaver you can then click on your CSS and then you can scroll through here and read up on all of this and see how it's being coded the different colors and you can work on updating all of that so I do highly recommend at least maybe you would consider using uh, the vertical bar uh, navigation menu or maybe the horizontal. It, I believe that the horizontal for, for our purpose is the most one that's most applicable for our informational websites. So image map example, how do we get this to have the functionality where a user can hover over Bruce Lee and see Bruce Lee's name pop up? Well, we know that the tooltip does give us that functionality, but how do we do that using Dreamweaver? Well, it's not really necessarily tricky. We just have to make sure that we, one, have entered in alternate text for Bruce Lee. So make sure that you have entered in your alternate text for Bruce Lee. And then what you need to do is, we don't really need this link right now, so I can go ahead and just remove that. But and I don't need the target so all I need to do is select my element my area element for the specific one that I would like the tool to, to pop up at 
and then I come up up here and I hit Spry Tooltip. And as soon as I click that, it's then going to create a Spry Tooltip. Notice that it put in the ID Spry Trigger 1. And then I can come over here and then it says Tooltip Content goes here. I can say Bruce Lee. Hit save, go to the design view. Notice down here in your page it's going to say, down here at the bottom it's going to give you a tooltip down here at the bottom. But that's not how it's going to look like when it's actually in the web page. I'm going to go ahead and view it in Firefox. I'm going to come over here and guess what's going to happen when I hover over Bruce Lee. Bam! It's going to say Bruce Lee. So that is a way, and then you can go into Dreamweaver, and then you can go to the CSS of your tooltip, and then you can learn about how all the CSS that's going on for that tooltip and how you can code it. To and same thing for the JavaScript. There's a lot of stuff going on here with the JavaScript for this one small little spree object, but anyways. Um, so I would hope you do enjoy uh, playing around with this. I don't know if you necessarily will be using an image map on your site or if you'll need something like a tooltip, but I'm guessing you will probably be wanting to have some sort of a horizontal drop-down menu. Be sure that you utilize your lender resources to learn about how to do these and also be sure that you are utilizing that page within the course where I talk about how to customize those different things as well. Um, so I hope you enjoy playing around with uh, your spree objects and your image maps and integrating those within the Drew or CSS layouts. Um, probably the two things that you found the most interesting, the most useful in this course is probably those CSS based layouts and the spry objects. Um, so again, I hope you've enjoyed uh, using this new ID that you've been learning over these, you know, these past few weeks uh, to do those few things. And um, I hope you do leverage those in terms of the functionality and design of your web page. Um, you know, and just be thinking about how those things are supposed to be used and, and how to best integrate those into your site. I'm hoping that through like those web critiques that we've been doing, you've developed your eye for functionality and design to really help you kind of think creatively on how to use those types of things. So as we conclude all of our videos, um, you know, let the class or I know if you have any questions this week, um, working and learning about those, those types of things and their use within Dreamweaver. Have a good day, and I'll see you in the course.